that are beautiful, things that produce brightness, like light. Whenever the day breaks and um, the sun starts burning to, to rule the day, there will be brightness. And um, the day don't need any other announcement to be made. Then once you see the light of the morning, it's a clear indication that it's a new day. And that's the testimony of brightness, and that's attraction. So the light of the morning attracts every living creature to begin the activity of each day. Now, same with the sun. The sun commands attraction because the sun is a light-producing body. And there's beauty that is attached to the brightness of the sun. So brightness and beauty commands attraction. So if you hear me talking about the moon, of April as a month of attraction. Revelationally, there is so much I know that has to do with that, but I'm focusing more on light and then beauty. These two things, you can't separate it. So the first thing I said here from my course, because I want to fly, the first thing I said here, I said that attraction is meant for beautiful and bright creatures. Attraction is meant for beautiful and bright creatures. Creatures like the stars, like the moon. When once the, the, the moon appears during the night season, there will be attraction everywhere. So, so there is nowhere you can you can hide from the brightness of the moon. And as far as the moon is shining in the night season, any night that the moon shines, the moon don't beg people to look at it and hear me. That's the power of attraction. So under this course, in this, in this teaching, I have a consciousness, and that's what I want to pass across to all that are listening, to all viewers, all that are part of this ministry, that all you need in life, or all that happens around you, you are responsible for them. Everything that happens around the man, he's, he's responsible for the happening. Because all you experience daily, you attracted it. And on that discourse, by God's grace, I'm going to be opening our eyes on how we attract those things. Every happening around the man, he is responsible. We are responsible to all that happens around us. Our daily experience, we are, we are responsible. So who you are, who you are will, will determine the kind of people you'll be attracted to into your life, people that will come around you as, as friends, people that, that will be part of your association. So the, the kind of person you are will determine the kind of people that you will be attracted. And in case what you've been attracted was not too palatable, I'm here to bring a light that can alter it. Praise God. That's the essence of this teaching. Things somehow a, a lot of people by by reason of ignorance uh, by reason of ignorance they don't know that we are living magnet man is a living magnet we are a living magnet so we, we are responsible for everything that we experience daily and that's the essence so when God told me that this year is a year of ever-increasing brightness and the month of April, he told me that it's a month of attraction. I'm, I'm conscious. I know what I, we are going to attract as a people. And that's why the team said in the testimony of ever-increased brightness. In other words, we are not confused of the kind of thing that we are going to attract. Now, because you can't separate words from brightness. You can't separate Money follows light to come to people. So when God told me that this month is a month of attraction, I'm very excited in my spirit because I know already what I'm going to attract. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Just like things that are beautiful. So, so things that are beautiful will also attract beautiful things. 
So that's the way it is. It's an order. It's a principle. It's a law. So in this teaching, I'm opening, I'm opening our eyes. And that's why from this course, I want all that are watching, all that are following this teaching to start paying attention to the word of God. You know, most of the times, because of ignorance, because we don't know the secrets that I'm bringing uh, where most of us don't know it. Now, because whatsoever a man stores in his heart, whatsoever you store in your heart, whatsoever you, you conceive, your predominant, or like you hear me say, that everything that happens around you as a person, you are responsible. So things that happen around men follow their predominant thought to come to them. Your predominant thought, things, that, that, that particular thing that you think constantly will begin to, will begin to form a habit. And uh, from habit now, a character will be formed, and from that destiny will be authenticated. And uh, when these two things are in place, it will determine your experience. Amen. So in this course, I said all you need in life, you are meant to attract them because you are a living magnet. All you need in life. Now, if you want money, now, now what you need to do is start, is start studying. Yeah, start, start, start subjecting your soul to learning. I will, I will soon take us to scripture, like a, a blessed scripture, the book of Third John. Said, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospered. So you can separate prosperity of a man from the measure of light that that man saw in his heart. So I said here that the measure of light of God's word we saw in our soul, we determine the percentage of the volume of God that the volume of God we can attract. Now, God, as a person, the, the, the God that we carry as human beings, the percentage of God in every man, the, the man will attract it. You are meant to attract God in your life. Like what I was sharing on, on the platform on Facebook, I said, what are you attracted? Is it God or the devil? Because you are responsible. Now, if you want to attract God, that's the essence of this teaching. What, what this teaching is all about is to close some certain negative doors around us as a people and as a minister. Now, because most of the time, because of some of the things we are ignorant of, the fallen spirit takes advantage of it. Now, no spirit will come around a man or come to a place if that spirit is not welcome. And uh, the, the, the painful thing about this is because a lot of people are ignorant of it. Now, a lot of people are not in charge of what goes on in their heart. And uh, that's why they are still deep pain around us. But praise God, today's meeting is meant to end pain around us. So I'm, I'm here before we end the meeting to open our eyes and expose us on how we can attract positive things and that's my concentration when i say all you need now it's left for you as a person now to define what you need is it money that you need and of course like when the scripture said i i have a thought that i think towards you and god make it clear so that we can be confused. He said, the thought I have for you is thought of good, not of evil. So when I'm talking about attracting all you need, on this platform I'm concentrating on good things. And of course I will also open our eyes because both the good and the bad goes hand in hand. So I'm concentrating on wealth. I'm concentrating on good health. Now, how can you attract this thing? That's a question somebody may be asking. And that's what I'm going to be, I'm going to be revealing. So know it today that you are a living magnet. You are a living magnet. And when you hear that you are a living magnet, I want you to know that the center of the magnetic field in a human being is our mind. Our mind is the center of this magnetic force. 
So in your mind, what goes on in your mind, like I said earlier on, your predominant thought, that which you think constantly will be responsible for your experience. Like a popular saying, hear me, you, you cannot experience what you don't expect. That's, one, that's another principle of life. What you will experience in life is what you, ex what you expect. You can't experience what you don't expect. Praise God. So quickly, let, let's run to the scripture. The very anchor scripture I am looking at is the book of Isaiah chapter 60. Uh, Isaiah chapter 60 is a blessed scripture. Year 2021 20, is our year of ever-increasing brightness. So I'm paying so much attention to life because I know what can be achieved through life. Now, hear me. All that have been following since I start running teaching this year, you will understand very well. All right, if you read from verse 1, verse 1 said, Arise and shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of God is risen upon you. 2 says, For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Three, my area of infancy, three, four, and five. He said, And the Gentiles shall come to thy light. That's attraction. And the kings to the brightness of thy rising. That's attraction. Say, Lift up thy eyes round about and see all they that gather themselves together, they come to thee. Thy sons shall come from far, and thy daughters shall be not at thy side. Five way I'm stopping, he says, Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thy heart shall fear and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee, and the forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. Praise God. Now, when you hear the abundance of the sea, and you hear the forces of the Gentiles, this is referring to money. It's referring to wealth. Now, like I said, money follows life to come to keep. And um, anybody that is desiring to be wealthy, if you are looking for wealth or you want to stand out in life, you want to come to the place of honor. I'm here today to review to you, to help you to understand it, that it's life that will bring you to that place. Just like from the scripture where we read, where we read, the scripture said, Arise and shine, for your light has come. And after stating that, after uh, th that has been established, now the next verse starts revealing to us things that will follow light to come to us. Hallelujah. That's the power of attraction. Now, when you hear glory, glory uh, commands attraction because glory radiates. Glory glues. There is radiance in glory. So you can't separate beauty from glory, and you can't separate glory from brightness, and these things command attraction. So things that has glory commands attraction, and the places of glory commands attraction. There are so much, like as time will permit to go and start reading that scripture, I was studying it in the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel uh, chapter 28. When you look at that scripture, the scripture talking about the king of Tyros, you see that the beauty and the greatness and the wealth of, of Tyros was in the brightness of the city. The, the, the king like when the scripture was des describing him, said there is no secret that can be hidden from him. In other words, he's a man that knows too much. He's a man that is associated with revelational knowledge. And all these things that I'm talking about, when you hear me talk about brightness, or I'm talking about attraction, I'm talking about what knowledge, what, what great, great, great wisdom, uh, what revelational idea can give to a man. You can't separate a man of intelligence from wealth. 
You can't separate a man of intelligence from honor. You can't separate a man that has spent time to acquire the light of God from majesty. Now, God rules because God is characterized with light. It's one of the scriptures we'll be looking at very soon. The book of 1 John chapter 1 from verse 5 says that God is a father of light. God don't have anything to do with darkness. God don't dwell in darkness. Darkness don't have anything to do with God. So, so by the virtue of the brightness that God commands, that's why he rules. So you can't separate dominion from bread body. So when I'm talking about attraction, I'm talking about attraction that will come, that will place a man to, to a place of honor, that will bring you to throne. And that's the attraction that I'm talking about. And uh, let me say for that, that you can't separate throne from attraction. Like when you read for that scripture, bless my soul, the book of Isaiah 60. I, I, I begin to see that scripture with a new understanding, with new eyes. May God say to me that this is a month of attraction. He said, go and study that scripture. So that's the, that's the, the revelation. So all of you that are following this commission, that are part of the word of unique relevance, like I keep saying, 2021, I'm very conscious. I'm very conscious of all that will be achieved, that God is determined to do great things in our midst, around us, and he's revealing the secret. So all that are part of this commission, that's why I'm making efforts to listen and to hear the pattern. And the key pattern is in the revealed word of God. So the measure or the percentage, the volume of God that, uh, that will be in a man is tied to the light of God's word. The, the, the quantity, the amount of revelational knowledge that you have from God's word that you store in your soul. That's what we command the percentage of God you carry. The percentage of God in every man is tied to the, 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 the revelational knowledge that he stores in his soul. What you know, what you know personally from the revealed word of God. What you depend on self-fellowship, on meditation to assess, to extract from the word of God. Now because God will always follow the light of his word to go to any people, to go to a place. Hallelujah. That's, the, that's the, another point that I make here. I said that God will always depend so much on light and um, light and value to go to any people. <laughs> so you can, when you hear me talking about attracting all you need, I'm talking to people, I'm talking to enlightened minds. I'm talking to people that, that have determined, that have made up their mind to conquer ignorance. I'm talking to people that are willing to study. People that are willing to give themselves to, to study to the men that will feed on God's war. That's the people I'm talking about. Now, because when a man begins to, like the scripture has reviewed it, there's no controversy about it, and there's no argument about it. If you can make up time to store the word of God in your heart, there's no coming down for you. And that's what I'm here to encourage us as a people, as a ministry to do today. I'm here to encourage you to start studying God's word. Since year 2021 began, I took a note, and that's why part of what I said in my, in my daily activity is my hour of study. I have, I have consciousness. When God told me that this year is a year of ever increasing brightness, he told me, he pointed at it. It's, it's a year of, of study. It's a learning year. And I want to help us to know is that learning it's part of living. Anytime a man is tired of learning, then that man is ready to die. All dead people are tired of learning. <laughs> of course, you know that this altar is an altar of immortality, it's an altar of life. <laughs> so, so this is an offspring ministry 
or of locust army. This is a locust army order. So the word of unique relevance, we are representing locust army, non-denominational. <laughs> this ministry, we believe in the activity of the God of life and immortality. And uh, immortality has to do with light, with brightness. So all the people that died, they died because they are tired of learning, or they refuse to learn. And they hear me, when you hear a man say that he can die, what that man is simply saying is that he's willing to learn daily, that he's willing to adjust daily, he's willing to abandon what should be abandoned and accept things that should be accepted daily. And hear me, that's what Apostle Paul was, uh, was trying to pass across to us in the book of First Corinthians 15, 51, where he said, we all shall not sleep. He said, but who will change? What, he, what is changed? That's transformation. And when you hear about transformation, what we give a man transformation is what he knows. When you receive a, an information, that's talking about knowledge. When you hear knowledge, knowledge is an access to an information. And when I'm talking about information, I'm not uh, on this court or platform talking about information you receive from conventional knowledge. I'm talking about what your fellowship with the Spirit of God will reveal to you. Hallelujah. When there is a new knowledge, when a man accepts a new knowledge, then that man has been transformed. When the way you look at things are altered, when you begin to see things in a new way. So in this month of April, God is telling us, of course, you know that we just rounded up the first quarter of our first victory service in 2021, dividing the spoil and brightness. And God came to April and started telling us that it's a month of attraction, uh, still authenticating that the things that has been divided and has been shared, we need to be attracting it daily. We need to be magnetic. The money you need, you are, you are responsible to magnet it. The, 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 the job, the kind of job that you want, you are responsible to, to attract it. The kind of husband, the kind of wife you want, you are responsible to attract it. And this you do through light. Hallelujah. Uh, if you want to be in good health, like the scripture said, and which above all things, that thou mayest prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prosper. Hear me, what prospers the soul is light, is revelational knowledge. Your, the soul, the enemy of the soul is ignorance. What destroys us, what destroys men is ignorance. So if you, you valued your life, you valued your soul, you will make sure that every day you expose your mind to knowledge, to revelational knowledge. There's no day that should pass you, that, that should pass you without you studying a verse of the Bible, without you listening to a revelational message like this message. Without you reading a revelational book. My papa, peace to him, Reverend Chris Christian, a gift for this generation, have more than 200 books. So, so a man that when I'm talking about, I'm talking about attraction because by the grace of God, meeting him altered my life. Knowing him is a blessedness of my life. And this revelation uh, is dedicated to him. Studying and listening to him. There's no day that I will not listen to his message. If, if I didn't listen to his message, then my day is not made yet. So a boldness is coming from what I hear him, what I hear him say, what he teaches, what God is depending on him to review. So I have boldness. So I know what I'm attracting, and I know what I will attract, and I know what I will continue to attract. And I'm here to help all my followers. I'm here to help all the lovers of this ministry. I'm here to help us to start knowing it. So that what, if you hate what is happening around you, then I'm here to advise you to start watching what you think, what you allow to go on in your mind as a thought. Start, start abandoning your, your former way of thinking that a new thought pattern must be assessed. So if you want to go forward, if you want to access, to go to a new level, a new height, 
then you must be ready. And hear me, it's not possible for you to, to assess a new thought if you are not exposing your mind to learning, to new learning. If you are not exposing your mind to the revealed word of God. The, the mind, the mind is subject to all manner of, all manner of, all manner of thoughts. I have a course I have run on that concerning the mind, and by God's grace, I'm just here to say a few things about it. I will not go too deep. The book of Proverbs 4.23 said, guide your heart with all diligence. It said, because out of it are issues of life. Now, when the scripture said, guide your heart with all diligence, that out of it are the issues of life, that's authenticating what I said, all that comes or happens around a man follows what goes on in the mind. And that's why it's a blessedness. Your security is being in charge of what you are allowed to go on in your mind. And hear me, it's not possible for you to be in charge of what goes on in your mind if you don't expose your mind to the living light of God's word. Because what will form a thought for you is what you hear. It's, a, it's the word that men hear that will in turn form a thought for them. And uh, invariably, like what I've said in my various books and teachings, uh, it, 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 the, the, your word and the word you think goes hand in hand. They, they, they go around themselves. They are in a cycle form. It is thought that will form a word, and it's word that will form a thought. So, so you, word from a kind of word. I hear me all these things that I'm talking about, like Jesus revealed in the book of John 6, 63. He said, the word I speak to you, he said, they are life and they are spirit. Uh, authenticating that the word of Jesus houses the spirit of life. Now, the, the kind of word that a man houses, we determine the kind of spirit that he will, be, that he will attract. So if you want to attract life, you will... You will you will store in your mind the word of life. If you want to live forever, expose your mind to the word of immortality. All that conquered death, conquered it consciously. And that's what I'm here to help us to understand. There is no lock there. There, there is no lock here. Uh, forget about what people call lock. That's deception. Everything that I hear me, most of the time that they call lock is because they don't have they don't have an accurate word that they can attribute that to. There is nothing like law. All great people are conscious of what happens around them. They are conscious. They know it. They are attracted. And that's why they don't talk about law. They don't talk about chances. What they do is that they take, they take advantage of chances. They take advantage of opportunity that each day provides. And uh, one of the greatest opportunity of each day is learning. It, 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 learning that we alter the way we look at things. Learning that will bring transformation. 2021 is our year, and that's why I'm coming this way. God bless you. Uh, and uh, uh, there is a scripture. I keep searching that scripture. That scripture bless my soul. And I'm, I'm praying on that scripture. And... Um, Today I took a new vow, I took an oath that that scripture will be my daily, my daily meditation vow. That's, apart from any other scripture I will look at, of course that scripture has been in my memory, can't die. I've been looking at it, praying with it, asking God questions from it, because there is a revelation I saw in it. And I will not be talking about it, but I just want to show, show that scripture to us. Because I'm still kneeling on that. Praise. The book of Matthew 6, 22, 23. 22, 23. Blessed scripture. And then I will read, I will read James 1, verse 17, and then summarize. Summarize the teaching. God bless you. I hope you are getting something from this teaching. So that we are in a time, a millennium, not a millennium, that is complicated. Like where we read in Isaiah said that darkness will cover the earth. That's part of the destiny of this time. When you hear that darkness will cover the earth, it simply reveals to us that we are in a time that ignorance will multiply. We are in a time of ignorance and we are also a in a time of knowledge. This is a time of knowledge and it's also a time of ignorance. And all the people, all that want to stand out, all people that, that want to, to be in the places of value, 
are those that treasures life, that have interest in learning, that are willing to forsake their own way of life. When the scripture was talking, the book of Isaiah was talking, Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 8 was, was talking, uh, says that, um, that I, I will look at that scripture, the Spirit is just bringing it to us. Said, he said that, that before God started saying, I have a thought that I think towards you, he said that he, God gave instruction, said that let an evil man forget, forsake his thought, for, and then forsake his way, and then turn unto the Lord. Now, this is what we call repentance. When you hear repentance, that a man repented, what it simply means is that that man forsake his old way of thinking, how he has been reasoning. Now, because it's how a man reasons that controls how he behaves. The character of a man is tied to what, how he thinks. And if, uh, if a man, if you want a man to change his behavior, what you need to do is to subject that man to new learning. And that's the essence of preaching the word of God. The, the message of repentance is a message of assessing a new knowledge. And when a man assesses a new knowledge and has willingness to abandon his old way of looking at things, then that repentance, and when that happens, a new, a new page will be opened in the book of life of the man. And that will begin to attract new things around the man. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. We are going to read the book of Matthew 6 from 22, 23. It says, the light of the body is the eye. He said, if therefore thy eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. I, I, since I saw this scripture, I have not taken my eyes off it. Been praying, seeking God, said, open my eyes. Let me understand deeper and deeper. I, it's a blessed scripture. I, I, today I spent time to search this scripture. And I took a vow. Been looking at it every day. He said, but if thy eye be evil, say, Behold, thy whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in the body be dark, how great is the darkness. God bless my soul. The book of James, James 17, I have quoted 1 John 1, verse 5, authenticating that God is the father of light. So God is God because he dwells in light. And that's why God cannot be, cannot be overthrown. And I want to authenticate it from the book of James chapter 1 verse 17. All these are sacred scriptures for me, these scriptures that, have, that can die from my spirit. Says James chapter 1 verse 17 said, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and coming down from the Father of light, with whom there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. Hallelujah. There is no variableness nor shadow of turning with God. God is the Father of light. And hear me like the scripture says, it said, every good gift and perfect gift. So when I, I said, under this course, attracting all you need. I want you to hear me that I'm talking about every good gift and every perfect gift which comes from above. So you are meant to attract it. And uh, the scripture says that this gift and perfect gift come from the Father of life. And because God is characterized by life, now, all that will relate or will have access to the things that God has or have are lovers of light. All that dwells in darkness or haters of light can access this good and perfect gift. So I'm here to encourage you to dedicate yourself to learning, to study. So I'm quickly wrapping up by this teaching. Remember I said I'm sharing on the topic attracting all you need from the brightness of, from your brightness. Attracting all you need from your brightness. 
and have authenticated. You can't separate brightness. You can't separate bright places from words. You can't separate bright places from royalty. You can't separate bright places from honor. You can't separate bright places from riches. Like when the scripture says that the treasures of darkness will come to us. So things that are in darkness, if you want to search things that are that darkness hides, you need light. You, you can't search things that are in darkness in darkness. So if you want to have access to things that are trapped in darkness, you need light. Of course, in the previous myth, uh, teachings I've shared earlier on from the month of January, I reviewed this. I said that the treasures of this time, the, the wealth of this time, are still stored in darkness. They are in darkness, and the scripture keeps really emphasizing on that. So if the treasures of darkness, if they should come to us, then we, should, we, we, then, we, we must be light-producing body, like the sun. You know, the scripture says Jesus is the son of righteousness. And uh, the book of Malachi chapter 3 said he's a son of righteousness and he, he rises with the healing in his way. So as I ran up this message, like I, I said, now when you hear about men, I'm talking about attraction, I'm talking about glory, I'm talking about presence. Now God's presence, reviews God's glory. And God's glory talks about the brightness of God. And uh, all these things uh, commands attraction. The presence of God commands attraction. The glory of God commands attraction. Uh, and uh, you can't separate a life that, that, is, that is overshadowed with the presence of God, with the glory of God from riches, from honor, from good health, from immortality, from divine health. You can't separate it's a prayer. All this is all the, the great men of the ancient time understood it. Moses understood it, and that's why Moses insisted. He said, I'm going nowhere if you are not going to go with me, your presence. And we know the story. He meant the journey continue in the wilderness. We know what the story, what, what the, the presence of God in the midst of, of, of the, the people of Israel accomplishes for them. The presence of God in their midst subdued their enemies, divided the right sea. There are a lot of a lot of tremendous accomplishments that came because of the presence of God in the midst of the children of God, of Israel. And that's why when the scripture was testifying about it, God was trying to open the eyes of the people of Israel. He said, For forty years that you walk in the wilderness, your clothes didn't talk. The clothes they wore or from the day they left Egypt didn't worn out. Their shoes didn't worn out because of the presence of God. They begin to enjoy immortality. Now, hear me. That's my way of rounding up, my way of wrapping up this message. Nothing dies in God's presence and nothing suffers in God's presence. In the presence of God, there is no struggling. When Adam was living in Eden, the very presence of God, there was no tilling of ground. There was no sweating before eating. Now all these things came when he walked out of the presence. And glory be to Jesus who has brought us back to the very presence of the living God. So in 2021, I'm here to, to encourage us to do all that is within, within our power. And know it, that that is the essence of you being alive and watching this teaching today. God believes so much in you, and there are so much that God wants to depend on you to accomplish in this generation. And you are responsible to attract it. There are so many divine spirits, positive spirits, that have not been part of the earth, that are waiting for our transformation to be attracted. We are responsible to attract them. They are waiting for our consecration. And we cannot afford to keep them waiting. We can't afford to allow them to remain an abstract being. We have to make them a reality. Like the scripture says, you know, Mary, the, the, the virtueness of Mary attracted Christ. And the presence of the Holy Spirit overshadowed her. And she gave birth to the Messiah. This is the power of attraction. Attracting all you need. I don't want to keep talking. We'll continue this series some, some other time. But I, I'm summarizing by helping you to understand that you are a living magnet. 
If you want to be wealthy, then you need to you need to start giving yourself to learning. Because the money you are looking for is in life. The Lord bless you. I'm summarizing. This is destiny's pro time. So I'm summarizing with this. I said that your 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 destiny is a seed of God in you. And it is an object of attraction. These are a, a way of, of summarizing. Now, all of us that carry great seed, there is a seed of destiny that is inside of us. And this seed of destiny that is inside of us will be responsible of things we will attract as well. So all seeds of greatness will always attract greatness. So I'm ending this teaching by allowing you to start paying attention to what happens around you. And then from looking at what happens around you, it will help you to start discovering who you are. And in case what is happening around you, you don't like it, there's an opportunity, and that's why you are alive. You are alive to hear me. You are alive to be part of this, this very teaching because change is constant. And because of the constancy of change, Great things can't stop happening on earth. Men can't stop rising from the place of obscurity. Now, all the people that became great, that stand out in life, rise from the place of obscurity. That's from the place that is shrouded in darkness, like the book of Isaiah 9 talks about the, the land of Zebulon and Naphtali, shrouded in darkness. But suddenly, light appeared. And uh, immediately, light appeared. They were rescued. Death doomed people are rescued. So today, the light of God has appeared to us through this teaching. And I want all that are 